What's up everyone, my name is Mark Hawk and today we're doing a quick side-by-side -side with Sony's HDR AS200V and we're putting it up against its predecessor from last year, the HDR AS100V. Now we're going to put these cameras through a variety of tests all throughout Los Angeles and we've got some amazing locations we went to this time. Now you can use any of these quick links to jump to the section you're most interested in, otherwise sit back and we'll just start playing them all in a few seconds. Now if you've been watching a lot of our videos and some of this footage seems familiar, it's because we're actually filming with the uh, four cameras you see on the bottom left-hand side of your screen all at the same time. So this is uh, going to save me a little time later with getting these edits up and stuff like that. And there's actually a picture of uh, what our rig looks like in the audio section. So anyway, let's get to it. So we're going to start off by taking a look at what both of these cameras does best at 30 frames per second. Now both of these cameras do have their XAVCS mode turned on, which on the AS100B is also referred to as the Pro mode. And what this does is it enables a higher bitrate. Now both of these cameras are uh, filming it with a bitrate up to 50 megabits a second at 30, 24, and 60 frames per second. This is enabled across both cameras. Now the Sony AS100V is running the latest 2.0 firmware and uh, we have that all up to date and weight wise these cameras are both the same weight. However clarity wise you can see right off the bat here there's a lot more clarity, there's a lot more sharpness and detail in the AS200V regardless of its sort of big, uh, smaller sorry, image sensor. So you can see on the AS100V there's a bit of softness, even sort of a bit of glow, not so much, I guess you can call that muddiness especially if you're looking in the bushes and stuff like that. Now as we switch over to 60 frames per second here you're going to notice a very small minor dip but not really enough especially after the YouTube compression you're not really going to see much of a difference when we go from 30 frames a second to 60 frames a second um, at least not during complete daylight as we move into low light I can see 60 frames per second taking a little more of an impact in the low light conditions but both Sony cameras uh, perform really well in low light conditions to the point where you can probably leave 60 frames per second on all day now again as we sort of pull out here on 60 frames a second just take a look at the sort of rock detail clarity and the bush detail clarity in the AS200V. It's much sharper, it's uh, got a lot more detail and stuff like that, a little more contrast. Our, our blacks are definitely not as soft as they are on the AS100V. Now we'll enable Steady Shot here, and what Steady Shot is going to do is it's actually going to give us a more narrow field of view. So instead of having a wide 170 degree field of view, we now have a more zoomed in and focused uh, I think it's 120 degrees field of view, uh, not quite 90 like you would maybe get on a sort of quadcopter, but we're going to do 120 here and you can kind of see how we have my girlfriend Amanda here sort of zoomed in, she's a little more close. We're losing a lot of that lens distortion on the sides of the camera, but one of the things you'll notice is when we do have steady shot locked off, there's that sort of rocking. That's not from the wind, that's um, steady shot trying to remain steady and trying to detect motion. It will sometimes do a sort of wavy motion that's much more noticeable I've noticed on the AS100V, but the AS200V when we get into some of our steady shot stuff later will start to show up. And again, uh, pro mode is enabled on 60 frames a second as well as 30 and 24. When you're filming towards the sun, you can run into a few issues. So we're kind of testing this here to see if it washes out the plate completely. Now with the AS100V on the left side, you know, we're kind of having that still washed out look. And you'll notice the HDR AS200V isn't as crisp or um, it doesn't have as much contrast as it did when we were facing away from the sun. But that makes sense because we're putting a giant light source right into the camera. So of course we're going to have to have the camera compensate for some things. Now if we look into the background, we'll see sort of how the whites are sort of blowing out the hills and stuff like that. But again, we're just... We're just looking at detail and clarity and stuff like that. Uh, the AS100V uh, compared to the AS200V in sort of this scenario isn't too far off, especially in the shadow areas and stuff like that. However, this shot's a little more interesting. There's actually a lot to look at here. Um, let, mainly, let's look at color. So on the AS200V, the color is actually being affected in a way that the sky is actually getting really crunchy. If you look in the corners of both frames, you'll see the sky sort of has a pixelated look. That's not YouTube compression. That's actually in the raw footage. And that's because we're crunching certain values on our uh, lookup table, our LUT, our sort of color grade that's applied to the camera footage. And it's causing some of this sort of um, compression-looking artifacts. And the AS100V actually boosts up the saturation a lot more. You'll actually notice the reds pop out a little more. If you've liked the Sony color grade in the past, the uh, AS200V isn't as um, isn't that far away from it. It's just sort of scaled back a little bit to be a little more natural, um, but it's still got very rich blues and very rich colors, just not as rich red and blues as you're seeing as you normally see popping in the HDR AS100V. And you can kind of see that here in this sort of uh, a little more washed out Hollywood sign 
sort of setup we have. If you look in the greens and stuff like that, you'll notice on the AS100V, they pop a little more, but if you want to look at the blues on the AS200V, even though I said they kind of pop more on the AS100V, they kind of pop more in the blacks than they do the whites. The AS200V, if you look at that lake on the right side, is uh, very rich in blue, and again, it's very sharp, but it's uh, maybe a little hard to notice here, and we'll zoom in in a second. We'll actually be able to see um, the AS100V is just, again, kind of muddy, especially if you go into the distance, the sort of skyscrapers and stuff like that start to become a little pixelated. Even the city that's up close right here in the center and the trails and stuff like that, it isn't as sharp and crisp. And if we look at the Hollywood sign there, it's just got really nice edges on the AS200V, but it is a little blue, but we can actually see into the distance a lot better. Now, what if we're not filming with the XAVC Pro Mode and we don't have the higher bitrate? Well, the next section here is going to actually take a look at the quality dip. So when we switch uh, in the next, we're zoomed in here. So when we switch to our next setup, it's actually going to be filming an MP4, which I believe is around 28 megabits a second. Yeah, 28 megabits a second. So you're going to see a slight dip in quality on both of these cameras. So if for some reason you don't have the right micro SD card, uh, this is kind of the result you can expect. Now, if you guys need suggestions on the micro SD card, take a look uh, at the more information section below this video. So right now we're filming in MP4 mode, Pro mode is turned off, 30 frames a second, and um, take a look at sort of the lens distortion here on the sides of the camera, we'll go more into that in a little bit. But yeah, we're, we're still seeing pretty much consistent results. 28 megabits a second compared to 50 megabits a second is a big difference, but if you're not putting your camera side by side up against another footage, you might not really notice the differences. So, um, Kind of the main drawback is you'll see some things will be a little muddier. You should still have the same sort of Christmas, uh, crispness de uh, details and stuff like that. But if we're looking at like the Hollywood sign on the AS200V, to me, there's a bit of a difference. So we're going to kind of go back and forth here at 200% between Pro Mode, which is what we have now, sorry, XAVC. And you can kind of see a small dip in quality when we switch to MP4. But um, you can just, it's a really good way to see the differences between what 50 megabits a second will get you and what uh, 28 megabits a second will get you. So let's make sure we have our high bit rate turned on right now. Uh, if you take a look in the upper left of both of these frames, you're going to notice that sort of compression coming along. It's not exclusive to the AS200V. You'll actually notice it a lot in the AS100V and even the X1000V if you're looking at the $500 model to consider purchasing that. You're going to notice a lot of that compression sort of uh, sort of LUT malfunction, let's call it. But looking at the colors here, you know, you'll notice that the Sony cameras are very rich in color. We have this very bright neon green backpack and on both of the cameras it's very consistent. But if you're looking at the hair detail, you got to give it to the AS200V. It's much more crisp, so you can see all the strands and stuff like that. And it's just not as muddy in the center of the screen. Now, right in the front here, we have a bunch of nice, long, tall grass that we're going to zoom into. And we get to see all the little details and stuff like that. Color-wise, the AS100V here and the AS200V really aren't that far apart. I can be kind of nitpicky and be like, oh, well, it's warmer in these scenarios and it's kind of cooler in these scenarios. But they both seem to share the same sort of color palette. It's really just contrast that kind of comes into play here in the sort of... A lot of that's coming from its sharpness and clarity. The AS200V just has a better sort of focal distance setup. And that could be because of the new Zeiss lens. Uh, I believe they're both shooting with the same... Uh, image sensor actually that the AS100V and the AS200V I believe they share the same image sensor but like look at all the details on the horse and stuff like that even when we're up close the AS200V is just much sharper and stuff like that it's handling motion going in front of it fine there's nothing really standing out the only real standout issue I have in a lot of these shots is just sort of how the color is affecting a uh, large gradients of the same color such as the sky getting all compression-y but you can kind of see how it also can kind of make the terrain here sort of an unnatural yellow like the dirt up in the Hollywood Hills isn't really that yellow. It's more of a sort of a rich brown or like a rich, yeah, a rich brown, similar to, I guess, like Mars dirt or something like that. It's not that orange at all. And that's not grass. That's, that's just straight up dirt. I'll actually get a little closer to it in a little while. One thing we're going to focus on here is lens distortion. Now, both of these cameras are filming with a 170 degree lens, but it's 170 degree plus a few extra degrees, which adds a lot of extra distortion on the left and right side of the camera. Especially the further uh, further away the object is, you're going to notice as we sort of pan and things come into frame, they're going to stretch and squish, but things that are further away kind of stretch, straighten out, and then kind of get distorted again. Now, it's a little more noticeable on the AS100V. The AS200V definitely has toned back, but you can still definitely see it, especially as Amanda comes closer to the sides of those screens. 
So what we're going to do here is we're going to take kind of an extended look at Steady Shot because it's a really compelling feature of both of these cameras. And when we're doing stuff like this, when we're just walking and we have Steady Shot enabled, we're going to get a more narrow field of view. But we're going to we're going to big trade off is going to be we're going to remove a lot of that sort of shakiness and handheldness that ruins a lot of really good shots. Now, one of the sort of basic flaws in using Steady Shot is every now and then you're going to notice a slight jitter or shake in your footage as the camera tries to recenter where the center of frame is and it's kind of trying to be steady again. So you'll be walking and you'll notice from time to time it'll jitter. But when you're doing things like this, when you're just panning left and right, you're losing a lot of that sort of handheld motion that would otherwise sort of make it a very unimpressive shot. So here we've turned off Steady Shot, and you can kind of see it's just kind of all that hand shakiness and motion, those imperfections, it's transferred right into the camera. When we switch Steady Shot uh, back on, again, we lose a little bit of field of view, but we get these sort of nice slow pans, and it's, um, it's a very easy way to sort of mimic having a sort of handheld gimbal. Now, if we move into these more heavy shots where we're going to be running down this sort of rock pace, it's actually going to remove a lot of the jitters, uh, more than you would maybe suspect. So we're going to zoom into 100% here, just so you can kind of feel like the sort of jagginess and the hitches that I was mentioning before. But just keep in mind, we're removing about 70% of the vibration in both of these cameras. So if you work within that limitation, you can make some really compelling edits, and uh, you kind of don't overextend yourself when you're expecting it to when you're expecting it to remove all of your jitters. Like we're going to jump down this rock here, and it feels super smooth. It didn't feel like we landed with a thud. It kind of helps ease us into the, the next sort of motion here. And again, it might not look like it this but this is a really steep rock face and we're just sort of booking it and running and stuff like that with the AS200V we're still having that extra sharpness uh, just look at that hair detail and stuff like that as we're running by um, and I'm just sort of like crawling and, and skimming across the ground here um, one of the things to watch out for though when filming in steady shot and moving is you're going to notice on the corners when you get close to stuff there's sometimes uh, warping. This is uh, You can notice this in the upper left a lot near these bushes and stuff like that. But this is the camera trying to uh, distort the footage to keep everything stable and in the center. I wouldn't consider this a deal killer by any means because you really have to be looking out for it to notice it. But it's just something you again should know about when working with steady shot. Now the big, um, the big addition to the AS300V is its ability to deal with micro vibrations a lot better. Now we have the cameras right now mounted to a mountain bike right on the handlebars, so all the vibration is being transferred into the cameras. And I gotta say the AS300V is doing a great job. I don't feel the AS100V is doing a bad job by any means, but you'll notice when we're going over the grass, the AS300V does a little bit of a better job of dealing with those vibrations. I'm not feeling that jerkiness that we had when I was just holding it in my hand before. Um, and you can see when we're on these smooth surfaces and like that, uh, we almost feel like we're on a drone, like with a gimbal. It's uh, very smooth and stuff like that, but again, as we go over this curb here in a second, we're not going to get rid of all of the vibrations. We're getting rid of most of the vibrations. So again, if you work within those limitations, you can have some really good results. So as we zoom into 100% here, we'll take that same run that we took just a second ago and just compare how each of the cameras is handling that sort of very high intensity vibration. One of the areas you might want to focus on is things in the distance when we're doing that run, such as that house that you see in the center of the frame there. If you want to rewind the footage, just watch it as we come up to that house. Okay. Now, since neither of these cameras have a way to control the field of view, our only option to go from a wide field of view to a narrow field of view is to enable steady shot. Now with the AS100V, it could be very swimmy when it's in a locked off position with steady shot enabled. You can kind of see it, it bouncing and swimming up and down. Now the AS200V actually is guilty of this as well, but you'll notice it much less at the head of the shot. You can see as we zoom into 100% here, we're still seeing a lot of that uh, color compression issue in the upper left, especially on the AS200V, but you'll notice the AS100V is just very swimmy when it's locked off. It doesn't do this all the time, but it's just something very noticeable. I haven't exactly determined what causes the sort of swimminess to come and go. If I had to guess based off my test, when I notice it, it's in these sort of wider landscape areas where I can't really tell what a horizon line is or if there's a subject in front of it that's moving. It's when there's complete uh, stationariness in the scene that it kind of starts to swim, especially again on the AS100V. The AS200V definitely does a better job of finding its location and then staying locked in. Now in this next section we're going to take a look at audio, so I'm going to sort of calm down here and just sort of let you uh, take that all in. And if you're wondering how the audio was filmed, there's a picture of our rig right in the shot. 
1080p, 30 frames a second. This is the start of our low light. Everything's in high quality, vivid color mode. And on the screen left here, we have the AS100, middle, AS200 to the right of that, AZ1, and to the far right, the AS20. So let's get out there. 1080p, 30 frames a second. This is the start of our low light. Everything's in high quality, vivid color mode. And on the screen left here, we have the AS100, middle, AS200 to the right of that, AZ1, and to the far right, the AS20. So let's get out there. Get the AS200V had a much richer, uh, more vibrant sound. The AS100V definitely sounded great, especially when you're talking to it. Uh, the AS200V just does a great job of picking up instruments and just having a lot more range when it comes to that type of audio. But mainly when you're pointing the audio source right at it, uh, when it's sort of on the sides and stuff like that, it can kind of... Um, not be as pleasant. It's definitely still within the good range, it's just it does a better job at picking up sounds that are right in front of it. And the AS200V does have a wind reduction mode that you can turn on, but in my minor test with it, and working with it on top of a car and speaking with it at the top of Vasquez Rocks, again we didn't have it on for those tests, but I also didn't really find it to help much. So we're into our low light section and we'll take a look at the AS200V here up close. We're going to take a look at the clouds and stuff like that. We have a really good uh, level of detail and the room lighting on these clouds is amazing. Uh, there's a good balance between the super bright center and all the shadows in the surrounding area. But both cameras are doing a really good job at exposing for low light and that's because of their sort of backlit image sensor. And what this allows us to do is we have these fairly low light conditions and still have a good balance between things that are dark and bright and not boosting up a ton of grain and stuff like that. But there's definitely a lot of detail in the AS200V I'm loving, especially the sort of upper left cloud detail and volume rate detail it looks fantastic. Now, another thing the Sony line of cameras is really good at doing is showcasing uh, color temperature. And mainly what I mean by that is the, the cooler color temperature, which other cameras don't really capture as well. So we get these really nice sort of uh, blues and purples and sort of golden oranges, especially after the sun has gone past the horizon line. And uh, again, the AS200V just has a lot of sharpness and clarity. I think that's kind of been established throughout this, and it's going to continue to be a running theme. But you can kind of see when it comes to low light conditions, they're both fairly on par. It's not like the AS100V is super dark and grainy. They're both on par, it's just one's a little sharper than the other. Both of these cameras are capable of filming at really high frames per second. We can actually go all the way up to 240 frames a second, but we'd have to drop the resolution to 480p, which I kind of feel is too low. So on the right, the AS200V is filming at 120 frames per second at 720p, and the AS100V is actually capable of doing this as well, but we have it set to 60 frames a second, because we're kind of showing what the differences are between the kind of two frame rates instead, since we've kind of got a good establishment on what the quality of these two differences are in low light. So with the 120 frames per second, we can actually slow that down to 25%. Now we're trying to do the same thing. We're trying to slow 60 frames a second down to 25% on the left with the AS100V. But since we don't have enough frames, we're going to have a lot of interlacing and stuff like that. We can actually capture a lot more clarity and details with 120 frames per second at 720p. If you're doing 60 frames a second, you probably don't want to go beyond 50% at the 30 frames per second playback. It's kind of basic knowledge, I know, but I just kind of wanted to showcase what the sort of different frame rate options are and what the quality differences you can expect. Now again, both of these cameras do an amazing job at filming at low light. Again, that backlit image sensor that's available on both of these cameras does a fantastic job of not adding a lot of green to our shot. It does make it a little softer in comparison, but the trade-off, in my opinion, is much better than the opposite, because introducing a lot of green just makes a very muddy image, even when we soften it down with sort of uh, degrainers or uh, neat video, sort of reduced noise options, we're just going to end up with a soft image anyway, so we'll let the camera do a lot of the work and we'll still retain a lot of that detail. Now you can see as we're filming in this courtyard here, um, nothing's really crunched out, like even that spot on the right, oh, there's still a lot of detail in there, we're not losing any of the lines, things aren't being crunched down, but if we bring it to a much darker environment here, there's a good balance. We don't have a lot of weird things, we don't have a lot of weird noise. Um, we just have a normal night landscape. Now if we wanted to use this camera as sort of a dash cam, uh, 30 frames per second is a really good option. 
Uh, I wouldn't bring it down to 24 frames a second because you're going to have a lot of motion blur. Also, I was originally going to cut this shot from the edit, but I wanted to show you how much blue is in the black on the AS100V. You can notice the water. It has a very rich blue uh, sort of tint to it. You don't really see that on the AS100V. I just found it interesting and kind of wanted to showcase it. But one interesting thing we did kind of run into when I was filming this test is I filmed a lot of these at 24 frames a second, thinking it would allow me to get more light. However, when I switched it to 30 frames per second, the camera actually got more light, so what I'm assuming is when we're filming at 30 frames per second, the camera is sort of auto-adjusting the exposure up a little bit to compensate for the fact that it's filming a little more. And I actually found filming at 30 frames per second over 24 frames a second to be kind of better uh, stylistically. However, I'm pretty sure with 24, we're capturing more information in locked off shots. So again, if you're using this as a dash camera, you might want to keep it at 30 frames a second and experiment at 60 frames a second because the worst thing is if uh, you need someone's license plate and there's too much motion blur at night, you're going to lose that. The You're going you're gonna to have more motion blur and lose that license plate number as we get into slower frame rates. So covering the UI is something new for me, but I felt like I really needed to compare the differences between the AS100V settings and the AS200V setting and how we sort of approach them. Now with the AS100V, you're very limited on what you can do, and a lot of it relies heavily on what the camera is set up to at the moment when you go into the app. So what I mean by that is if we have um, XAVCS or Pro Mode turned on, we can only change those three resolution options in the camera mode. So we can only go from uh, 30 frames a second, 60 frames a second, or 24 frames a second in high quality mode. But if we go to the physical camera and turn pro mode off and turn it back to MP4, all of a sudden those same settings will allow us to choose a bunch of different frame rate options. So now we can do 120, we can do uh, high quality at 30 frames a second, but the way it's listed isn't also very clear because you'll have things that say PS, HQ, 120, STD, I think that's steady, nothing perverted, um, but it's just, it's not super user friendly and it's very limited and a lot of it relies heavily on having access to both devices at once. So if you have your AS100 mounted somewhere where you can't physically reach it and you're relying on the remote or the wristwatch, uh, you're going to be out of luck. Meanwhile, the HDR AS200 V gives you access to a load of options. You can switch everything on and off with the exception of maybe GPS from the remote. And that goes for the same as the AS100. You need to get to the actual device if you want to turn on GPS. Now again, we're just kind of going through all the menu settings here, but you probably saw the AS200 V had a huge list of options you can switch. Uh, the one thing that I was saying before that bugged me with the AS100 V is when we are picking uh, different resolution modes and stuff like that, when, we're, when we have Pro Mode or when we have XAVC turned on, um, we'll have this window right here on the left where it's very clear we're filming 60, 30, or 24 frames a second at a 50 megabit uh, bit rate. However, if we don't have um, Pro Mode turned on, we're gonna get this menu and it's PS, HQ, STD, and then, I mean, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory, but what you need to know is like super slow basically records the footage in super slow motion and you don't have to retime it later to get that slow motion, but you lose the audio. Meanwhile, if you pick 120 frames a second, you get the audio, but it's all playing back at 30 uh, at 120 frames per second. So you'll have to go and manually slow it down yourself. And a lot of this isn't very clear on the AS100 and the options are very limited and then I can't figure out, I can't even recall how to change the frame rate without going into the app, which caused a lot of issues when filming this comparison. Now, oddly enough, the AS100V might actually make for a better still photography camera than the AS200V, and that's mainly because it has a bigger image sensor. Its image sensor is 13.5 megapixels, as opposed to the AS200V's 8.8 .8 megapixel. Now, why this difference even exists, since the cameras are pretty much identical in shape and form factor, I have no idea. Maybe it's a cost-cutting thing, but the bottom line is the AS100V has bigger resolution images than the AS200V, but quality-wise, they both are fairly spot-on. Now, if you're looking at this through YouTube, you're not going to see a ton of detail. I can maybe point you towards the rock face on the right side. On the AS200V, you actually might see a little more clarity, a lot more detail, but it's very nitpicky. Here we have a sort of good example on what the size differences are between each still photo. Again, they're both 16 by 9 at image resolutions that don't really roll off the tongue, but quality-wise, they both stack up fairly close to one another. Color-wise, they're not too far off. You could say one's brighter, one's darker, one's slightly less muddy than the other, but they're all both fairly spot on. The only area I'm really able to spot a difference is when we're looking at sort of chrome shiny objects, which we'll get to in a little bit. 
Now one of the big downsides on both of these cameras is the photo taking button on the camera is on the back of the camera which will actually push the camera forward and it makes taking photos in low light conditions very hard because you'll get a lot of motion blur and you won't have these nice crisp images like all of these lines here should be much sharper but since I, I took the photo by pressing the back of the button they are less than ideal. Uh, however here we took the photo with the uh, app button so things are much sharper. Uh, you, you're gonna want if you're gonna take a lot of still photography and Basically, I just don't like the back button photo. Now we're going to go through these next photos fairly quickly. Again, I can be very nitpicky and say one slightly better than the other. Um, you might notice some distortion on the left and the right side, like the AS100V seems to be sharper than the AS200V when it comes to the sides of the screen. But as we wipe through it here, um, I'd be hard pressed to really see any difference. The only big difference I see is mainly on this headlight here. Now when, you're, when we're going to do this wipe here in a second, um, you're going to notice that it kind of, the, that the AS100V is kind of uh, not as sharp as the AS200V's chrome light, but again, through YouTube compression, you're probably not going to see that, and to the average person, if you're not putting these two cameras side by side, I doubt they'd really notice a difference. Hey, you made it this far into the video, and I'm super stoked you got this far into it. I know there's a lot to cover in these videos, and they can be rather long, and there's still a lot we didn't cover. Um, we have a bunch of other videos coming out, though. Check those out. They might cover more some of the things we missed. If there's anything we missed, you can leave it in the comments section below, and we'll try and cover it in a future video. Uh, also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Check out my Patreon page and share this video, because your exposure helps me more than anything else. And we're also going to be taking a quick look at the DJI Phantom 3. I'm really excited to get my hands on that camera, see how that camera holds up, and just see the minor improvements, or the major improvements, on the DJI Phantom 3 over the 2. So yeah, we have a lot to cover. We still have a lot more videos to go. I'm super stoked to do it, and I hope you'll join us. So I'll see you guys out there.